and we're back yes you're back at Deb Chanel's 48's world and I am Deb Chanel and we are going into part two of the reunion of the Married to Medicine franchise okay for Atlanta Georgia <laughs> Yes, we're into reunion too, guys. This is where all the pop locking, pop locking, we call it blows being blown, uppercuts, and <coughs> you know, TKOs going down. All them wrestling moves, but not necessarily uh, physically. They're doing it all verbally. Even though it seems like Dr. Heavenly and Dr. Simone want to be about them hands going wrong. You know what I'm saying? They want to get the shaking each other everywhere but loose. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say, honey. They brought the smoke. Yes, reunion one was okay. But honey, they bought the smoke for two. <laughs> and I tried my best to get it out last night for you guys. But honey, baby, I was like, uh-uh, I got to go to sleep. They don't gave me a headache. I've been going back and forth on the sidelines waiting to see who's going to give it up, who's going to just fall all the way back. But they weren't doing it, honey. Simone and Dr. Heflin was definitely going back to back to back because she didn't want nobody talking about her husband, Cecil. And God dog it. Dr. Heflin was digging in, digging in, digging in, okay? But let's get on into it. We got Dr. Simone, we got Dr. Jackie, and we got Dr. Heflin. And it's all about to go down, all right? Dr. Simone ain't happy with Dr. Jackie being friends with Dr. Heavenly. She thinks she is Satan in the female form dr simone ain't got no love for her she always be talking about uh cecil always trying to get her husband damien drunk and dr simone said girl you must be crazy <laughs> you must be out your mind honey she called her the biggest ugliest liar there is on the show that what dr simone told dr heavenly and she came for the life of her understand why her best friend her boo thing her girl crush her best friend dr jackie want to be solidifying herself up there trying to be friends with dr heavenly she can't take it child she break down and um What's the night? Andy was saying, damn, Simone, you seem like you um say you threw with Dr. Jack or you don't care too much for the relationship. But your your demeanor and your crackling of your voice and all these other facial uh, expressions you show and say something different, honey. Your mind saying one thing, but your whole demeanor, your facial expressions are saying a totally different thing. So nobody believed that Dr. Simone was over the friendship with Jackie. She wanted that friendship, partner. She needed that friendship, partner. And Dr. Jackie basically went over there and gave her a hug and everything. And they kind of seem like they going to make up. But I guess it's going to be off air. And since this is the end of uh, their season and they're doing the reunion part, it's it's a safe bet to say they'll be spending a little bit more girl time with each other and try to mend their fences. But far as Dr. Jack is saying, uh, if she had to choose between Simone and Dr. Heavenly, she'd rather leave the show. And I'm like, and, 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 this your time, honey. If you want to just bring in somebody else and replace Dr. Jack, we really don't see need to see Dr. Jack. That, that, that can be a friend of the show if she need to be. You know what I'm saying? Go on and call her bluff, Andy. Go on and call her bluff. But he ain't doing that. But he did say it for all of us to see. You really will leave the show is what you're saying. And I don't know if Dr. Jack is trying to make it a bargaining tool or whatnot. Because she sure did get her drama field. She with Buffy Parcell going back and forth. And the infertile type statement she made. And girl, out of legalities that could have taken place if Buffy really wanted to get involved with legal representation. Dr. Jack got to think about that thing. She said, wait, hold, hold up, hold up now. I need to go on public air and, and stress this thing out. So, you know, she went and talked about her Queen V presentation and the uh, honoring ceremony she had for herself in the book. And she said she looked back at it and it was just horrific. It was just horrifying. I said, now nah, your career in jeopardy. Is it in jeopardy? Somebody knocking on your door from the medical association saying, 
girl did you do this did you do this foul thing by put this woman personal business i don't care if y'all had it in confidentiality y'all were just speaking amongst each other but did you actually put her personal business about her medical condition out there on front street girl you better make it right you better make it right honey <laughs> Would this somebody come to your door, Jack, and tell you that or write you a memo or a letter or something to that effect about correct that situation? But it may still be an infraction on your medical license. I don't know. What's going on, Jack? Tell us the real truth. Tell us the real truth, girl. Because when you was in St. Lucas, uh, Mexico, you said you were ended. You were done with that situation. So what happened, girl? I'm trying to figure it out, girl. But anyway, moving on. She gave her another fourth apology. Full felt. She went over there and hugged Buffy. Told Buffy she would sit there and deliver her baby if she would allow her to I'm like uh-huh and Buffy was still talking about tomorrow well we can work on our relationship but we got to work on it outside of the cast outside of this show this that and the third and, and Jackie just looked at like mm-hmm <laughs> Well, she ain't finna thing with you on the outside girl she just did that for it uh I guess lawyer representation confirmation that you know she apologized you accept her apology and they going forward she ain't really want to sit there and have no uh dinner and lunch with you and try to become best buddies no honey no but anyway that's just my pun intended that's how I saw it but honey Andy came with them receipts child he would come with them receipts left and right on their behinds and especially when Dr. Hevelin called Buffy Fat <laughs> And I'm like, sticks and stones, Dr. Heavenly. You should not be throwing at glass houses when you ain't got yours together. You were just that that type of a woman back in the day, honey. But then somebody on the cast told you you need to lose a little weight, become a little bit more personal with society and how they view uh, women and, and men and how they really want men and women to look, okay? That image that society portrays and puts out on uh, society for us to conform to, all right? So anyway, uh, we go on. We got Dr. Jack and uh, didn't like Toria sitting on Curtis' lap uh, through one of the particular episodes. And I want to say it was either se season um, what were we, seven. It might have been season five or six. But we have to understand, Curtis pulled, okay? He actually got up and pulled Toria down. And I, I would have been sitting like the same situation, like, this man pulling me on him. Don't he, not, don't he see his wife in the background? Lord, what can I do? Lord, what can I do? <laughs> Help me out, Lord. I probably would have just been there sitting on his lap too frozen. Like, ooh, boy. Ooh, boy. I mean, why would, why would Curtis do that? That's what you need to be asking Curtis and offering up an explanation on his behavior, Dr. Jack. And not putting it on girl code and trying to call Toya out on the circumstances. No, she didn't go plop herself down on Curtis's lap. Like, you know, it was nowhere else to be sitting or anything of that nature. He pulled her down. She did not underestimate or did not over extenuate. Excuse me. She didn't uh, overextend herself to be sitting in his lap, okay? That's the difference when you plop down and you selfly um, on yourself, um, meaning, ugh, um, lack of a better word, you didn't do it on yourself. You were pulled in the situation. It ain't like you just said, okay, I'm going to sit on Curtis' lap. I don't care who like it. And I definitely don't care if Jack like it. Bam, boom, there it is, okay? No, he pulled her down. So that's a whole different other situation. It's like you always deflect and you're trying to put everybody in the hole and, and, and make them feel less than, but you don't want to do that with your husband because you don't even have to put up with this issue of having a child or not, okay? You might not have his child, but you have a child. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah, what do you throw him out gone i guess to spread the whole house be like orphan annie just adopt children honey you could fill it up just put him out because you can afford to raise these children by yourself educate them and all that good stuff and you'll be well off you'll be very well fed you might even make a meet a man that's in your same way of thinking like kindred kindred spirits and y'all can go and have a family Cause that's what you want anyway and you toying with uh big old lurch looking curtis cuter than lurch but still that height that build oh girl but anyway you say you like that type of a man but it is what it is we're gonna move on from you dr jack got dr simone she's asking jackie would you have uh been around 
if the shoe was on the other foot, if Dr. Helen was going off on Curtis and doing all these unlisted type things and, and just negative behavior, would you hang around her? Would, would, you know, what, what would you do if she did what she's doing to me and my husband? What would you do, Dr. Jack? So Dr. Jack would like quiet as usual because she wants to stay neutral. But sometimes you can't stay neutral. You got to get off the fence and you have to choose a side. Okay, it just is what it like is. Who's right? Who's wrong? That's what you know. You would forward your guidance on uh, your moral what you call it your moral compass of which you gauging yourself on. You just call a spade a spade. If somebody's acting more foul than the other person, just say it and be done with it. Hey, let them work it out. You're neutral, okay? Because you like both of them for some reason, okay? One of, each one of them give them something to you that you like, and you know I'm like. Mm girl nah, i ain't gonna even say it <laughs> i was just gonna say it's, it's, a, it's a back party down low relationship going on between you and dr simone or could it be with you and dr heavenly i'm just allegedly speaking because i can't see you getting down with curtis out of foul mess and foul things he have done girl i'm just saying okay but we'll move on we're gonna move on we're gonna move on um and then they still fussing meaning dr heavenly dr simone and and um, that's when Dr. Simone just had it. She was up to the field. She called Dr. Heavenly the ugliest liar she had ever seen and come across. I said, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, we getting hot tonight. And they weren't even having no uh, cocktails, okay? Um, they were speaking their truth out of anger, all right? So they're still going back and forth. And, you know, Dr. Heavenly, she had like she from the hood or somewhere. I don't know where that woman come from, okay? I don't know. It's just like she see, she see red. And they had her all on Red Street, honey. She was just uh, picking them up and laying them down, just tossing, turning, you know, like a little tornado over there. I don't know what to say with Dr. Heavenly, but that demeanor, I'm like, get her, please get her a, a, a chaser. Please get her a drink. Let her come all the way down. Then we may really get some tea, but she'll be too you know, lethargic to try to do anything or, or, or try to get up out of her seat at least because she was sure trying to get up out of her seat last night like she want to get to fight. And you know that grown woman ain't you know, throwing no hands and then like that, girl, please. And probably that small would have just slayed her and pulled all the way around that little pretty thing they had of a closet being decorated up with the finest accessories, okay? That would have been cute, but it would not have been, you know, it would have it been a lot of legalities. <laughs> Just put it like that. But honey, Dr. Jack and finally just tell her to hush. Just hush it up. Then, then she was like, mm, mm, I ain't going to say nothing now. I'm, I'm zipping up my mouth. And I'm like, girl, why does another woman got to calm you down? Why does another woman have to calm you down? Why you can't calm your own self down? You say you're spiritual and all like that. Why you just didn't pray? Pray about it. Okay. Tell the Lord to hush your mouth for this time being. Okay. Until somebody asks you to speak, then you'll speak. Like speak when you're spoken to, but don't speak out of time. And, and definitely don't be interrupting nobody, okay? Just to get your say in, just because you heard your name being brought up, okay, Dr. Heavenly. But anyway, move on to Dr. Small. Dr. Small breaks down about her friendship ending, or it seems like it's ending with Jackie, and she's telling everybody they used to study together. I'm like, what y'all studying for? Y'all both doctors. It's just like uh, educational CUEs, you know, continue education type uh, things y'all going through, and y'all have to get pre tested and post tested for stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm not understanding, but I guess it has to be, you know, you have to take refresher courses in the field that you're studying or something to that nature. Come on, like, what are y'all studying for? Okay, are y'all getting other degrees under your belts for your field of choice of a career? I'm, I'm confused. Y'all should have made that a little bit more um, clear. We should have spoke more on that. But anyway, they, you know, just saying that they study every year around this time to do whatever, whatever. You know, I wasn't clear. I wish they would gave a little bit more clarification, but they didn't. OK, but it just is what it is. But she said she missed Jack. She missed all that. And Jack kind of felt her pain. And um, she went over there and hugged Simone. And it seemed like Simone was in better spirits after she got that hug, that love on from Dr. Jack. And. You know, I'm like, damn, Jackie, you carrying the whole world. You carrying the whole show on your burn, ain't you? It's you, 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 a burn. This show is just a burn to you, baby. But okay, if you still want to make that money, you go on and hold that burn down. <laughs> I bridge over troubled waters. Lay me down. Okay, I'm just saying this little Aretha Franklin. Probably some other people that reproduce that song as time goes on, okay? But it just is what it is. I'm like, girl, stop in the name of love. 
Before you break their hearts, jack it, think it over. Yes, Simone or Heavenly, think it over. Simone or Dr. Heavenly. Okay, I just had to get into it. <laughs> but it's just seemed like they were just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Oh, Dr. Simone, it was more so about their husbands and their husbands going out and drinking. And Dr. Heavenly thinks, uh, Dr. well, not Dr. Cecil, but Dr. Simone's husband, Cecil, is a bad influence on Dam- Damien or Damon or whatever her husband name is. And I'm like, Dr. Heavenly, these ain't school age people. These are not people in the college days. Come on now. These are grown ass men, okay? Ready to meet their maker at any time. All right? They're grown. They have kids of their own, okay? And you trying to treat them like they out they high school people or early on in college or something, just shooting the shit for fun. No, they grow men. Let these men be men, okay? Get out of their heads, all right? But that seems like she just blaming Dr. Simone's husband for everything, and they've been battling out in social media, which I don't know why Cecil was up there battling. And I do have some of the, um, what do you call it, uh, emails or transcripts of emails that were sent on social media so y'all take a look at them y'all view them or whatever but i was like this is too much emails going back and forth on a, mon- a man and a woman uh cecil and dr heaven i mean come on what was dr simone thinking and what was uh damien thinking about these two okay pretty just is what it is okay then we go to scene two we got mariah takes us back on um Jack and not validating on the situation of this cocaine allegedly use that uh quad is continuously bringing up and from my understanding this is talking about cocaine use and infidelity with her sister's husband with quad being in the middle of both uh incidents it's just ridiculous we're talking about 20 plus years this rumor about cocaine use, and I don't know how long ago the uh, issue was about uh, Claude cheating with her sister's husband, but I'm sure it's like, let's say, five plus years, okay? This is old drama, old drama. Like, who cares? You know what I'm saying? It seems like y'all both weathered it, and it doesn't seem like it's holding much validity. So let it go. If y'all don't have nothing that's happening currently or six months to a year, in the past, I don't want to hear about it. I don't think nobody goes in the audience either. Do either, okay? So Mariah and Quad either get it together or leave it alone. Just be a monster group, okay? Be cordial with one another, but give us something we can get our uh, minds and heads wrapped around, okay? Because y'all were just acting like school kids up there, and I'm talking about in your primary years of learning. Elementary is what y'all was giving me, so. It doesn't matter what y'all were fussing about. I don't care about the cocaine usage. I don't care about um, Claus cheating with your sister's husband. It's just really irrelevant. Okay, so I need y'all to get another storyline going on with one another. Or just leave each other alone. Because even the cast, like when Claus start talking, they be like, Has she finished it? Has she finished it? <laughs> They didn't want to hear it. And I could quite understand. I didn't even want to hear it anymore. So it just is what it is. Then we leave the ladies alone because they don't cut up too much more than what anybody else wanted to really even see them do on live television. Okay. A recorded taped of live uh, episode that they filmed for us. We have the men come out, okay? And they have a beautiful setup for the men thinking it was uh, Eugene's closet. But Eugene, <laughs> Ooh, he ain't even got a third of that looking up a closet, okay? It just is what it is. And he's a humble man. You know, he loves his toy. Your toy loves him. Toy is flashy and like to have the finer things of life. And Eugene loves to just make her have access to it all okay so it just is what it is but they're in a men type of closet and men are being interviewed and you know um he's andy's joking with all the men talking about okay who's sliding y'all dms and all this kind of stuff and kurt is like i don't have social media I'm like kurt we don't need you to have no social media anytime you go out we know who you are we run into you in the street so 
Definitely. You don't need no social media. You don't need nobody because you know how to hook up when you want to hook up. And you can't even do a hook up right because you end up getting caught. But it is what it is. You and Dr. Jack were on bad terms at the time and you want to show your ass. We get it. We got it good. Okay. Um. Then Scott, you know, he calls himself trying to be a rapper. And I'm like, somebody take his mic because I'm not really feeling it. <laughs> really feeling nothing he doing he just looked like he was just talking talking i'm like when is he gonna start rapping they're like oh it was he I like, oh lord uh-uh he wasn't rapping in high school college and he sure ain't rapping in his early I mean, his early season years as well okay so we're gonna put him on back burner with that one don't come out and don't charge nobody because they're gonna be asking for a refund i'm just saying scott uh <laughs> then we got um um what's his name cecil goes on to ask because andy is you know inquiring and they well i guess andy feels that from past conversations that cecil and quad's ex-husband uh gregory are still hanging out with each other they show film clips of when it was happier times and this that and the third and uh Gregory said yeah we just hung out with him and his girlfriend and everything and you know i don't really want to put you know, all that on Quad, because Quad is a very nice lady, and whatever happened between them happened, but they're still two good people. They just can't be with each other, at least not at this point, this juncture in their lives. So they both moved on. And he was saying that Dr. Greg was asking about Quad, how she doing, this, that, and the third. And I'm like, Gregory, you are just trifling. You were trifling with um, Quad when y'all were together. Now you're trifling now that you're single, because you with Y'all are supposed to be on a double date or y'all are visiting with uh, Cecil and Simone and you happen to have your lucky lady there who's looking all scrumptious and whatnot. And you're telling them about how much you miss Quad and, and all this and you miss the marriage. I mean, brother, 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 brother. Quad need to keep running and everything. And she had a nerve to be watching this in the background because they don't put them in the area where when the women were out on the platform discussing the season the men were behind and you know in the little room held up for when it was their time to come out so they switched places and then Qua gonna sit up there and cut, like she crying and caring i'm like cry cry me a river okay honey because why don't you just on stage talking about you living your best life you trying to live your best life now you want to cut up like that girl please get the hell out of here but anyway you being an actress keep going to school because it wasn't believable uh then we got dr contessa uh, Dr. Simone was over there trying to, you know, what do you call it, pull quad together and whatnot. And then Contessa going to jump up and like she's, you know, the mother of mother nature and she's going to sue quad a little bit better while she's going through this crime spell. I'm like, see, that one time I thought I kept that. Contessa, sit down somewhere. Let somebody else, an older member, go and comfort her. We don't need you up all up in the sauce, okay? Because handle your own business. Let us see you for another couple of seasons and see that you have developed and matured into a wife, okay? Pretty much. Because anytime you don't get your way, you revert back to a childlike behavior and tendencies. And it, it just don't look good. It don't look, cause look how you treated Buffy. And Buffy was there for you when you were going through your little plight with your husband not understanding why you wanted to go back to school and this, that, and third. And then you're going to turn on her, try to go military commando on her. Talking about, you will listen to me. You will suck this stuff up. You will prevail. And all things Buffy should have did was took off her flip flop and knocked you upside your, okay? But anyway. He just is what it is. Then you got um, Cecil saying the woman um, when Andy was asking about the DM sliding and, you know, have y'all got woman and women and pro approach y'all when y'all outside uh, in Atlanta uh, moving and shaking or whatever. And, you know, of course, other men were like, no, nah, not really. And then Cecil like, yeah, I'm to my own horn. Yes, honey, I'm getting them before the show. But I get it. You know, it's, it, it's good. Hey, it's a plethora of them coming for me. But, you know, they know I'm married and all like that. But I acknowledge, yes, I do. And, I, yeah, I do like the attention, too. But it just is what it is. <laughs> See, so crazy, but he got a little suaveness about him. So I'm like, okay, okay, Simone, know what she got. 
she know what she almost lost too. But nobody gonna put up with Simone the way Cecil do and same thing with Dr. Um Dr. Heavenly. She ever lost Damon Child play. That probably the best thing to Damon, but he ain't gonna say it on TV. No, he ain't. He ain't gonna embarrass his wife and have to go home and deal with that woman behind closed doors with her everlasting energizing bunny mouth. Child please. Mm mm. No ma'am. No ma'am. I'm like I plead the fifth too. If I was a man and married her, I I would plead the fifth. But anyway, moving on from that situation. Um they go into the um but they go into the scene where Andy takes them into the scene, I should say. We're uh they're in uh St. Lucas, Mexico, Cabo, and they're saying about the women. Why why were the women all coming for you, Damien? Why did why it was I think it was a setup. And child out the heavenly was having a fit back there mm -hmm. in that taping room or a waiting room area. She was just like it pretty much she wanted to say, no, nah, Cecil brought that mess up. And it showed them sh showing clips with Cecil the next day. Had understood that Dr. Heavenly wasn't feeling nothing that was done. And since he hosted the little dinner and the, you know, the entertainment afterwards, she blamed that all on Cecil. Like Cecil was trying to ruin her marriage or put Damien in some uh, situations that he didn't have no business being in. And that he didn't know how to handle himself. And he don't know how to act appropriately without her and all this kind of stuff. And Cecil was trying to take the blame and say, hey, it was us. It was me. If you want to blame anybody, it was me. But Damien didn't do anything and you know Damien was very free with them hands like no you see public y'all see people watching the show I ain't got my hands on nobody I ain't got I ain't saying that I ain't doing nothing you know what I'm saying but he probably was enjoying it but it was all done in fun I mean the the stripper was taking it a little bit too far, um, far but it is it but it is you know but um, Dr. Hammond, ooh, she was having a fit behind in the dressing room. And, you know, the guys were just like, you know, being real with it. And they knew what they had as far as in their women. And they weren't going to be very disrespectful or nothing of that. But, honey, that's when Dr. Simone and Dr. Hammond got in it again. And Dr. Hammond had called her husband a itch or had itch type mentalities going on. Honey, Dr. Simone said, I ain't finna sit back here and you try to defame my husband and call him a itch, girl. Then she started getting into some real tea. She was saying that you think your husband is all this and that. Who you think Cecil be getting drunk with? Who you think they have to be taking your husband home from a drunken stupor that both of our husbands took a part of? I was like, girl, go on. Tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me what you got on the doorstep. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, girl. Tell me more, tell me more. That's what I came for. Okay, girl, yes. Dr. Oh, Simone was just hitting all the right buttons to pretty much crucify Dr. Heavenly. Dr. Heavenly was like, what a lie about? What a lie about? Tell me what a lie about. And of course, she's calling her everything under the sun, but a child of God, honey. And for her to be a Christian, Dr. Heavenly got a filthy, filthy, filthy drunk sailor mouth okay i was like oh my goodness oh my gracious Woo! are we gonna see a fight out up in here just time to waver where y'all can't do seat litigation but go and do that cat fight pull out them weaves pull off them wigs and, and breeze up and let's have a brawl back there that's what i wanted to see but of course dr can tell so i always got to be to save a whole person she went and got dr heavlin they i call themselves um exiting the room um that the women were being involved in of course security gonna come see what all the hoopla was about and i would just been sitting there looking like mm, 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 mm. i wouldn't be trying to stop nobody i'm like let the fat let the fight happen okay <laughs> Just let them go and get all that pent up energy out of them and let have. Just let them have. Let, let them tear up the room. Okay. Just let them tear it up. Okay. Ooh, child. It probably did them a world of good. Hell, I know what it did me a world of good, but it just is what it is. But I'm telling you, season uh seven reunion part two child that was on like popcorn i couldn't come back that night i couldn't come back last night and give it to you because i was like oh my head hurt oh my head is hurt i can't even think about what i wanted to say how i wanted to say it it was just too much i was overwhelmed <laughs> 
Now, if only they would have kept this shit up, you know, throughout the whole season, during each episode coming up to the finale. It would have been cool. But we still got one more. I don't know if they're going to show it the first weekend or the first Sunday in January or not. Or whether they're going to they gonna make us wait for a couple of weeks and then come back. Uh, for part three reunion. Because technically, I couldn't have took it. I wish they would have really just broke it up. Because that was, that was a lot to be sitting two hours. That was a lot. But anyway, it was good. Especially season, uh, well, uh, reunion two. Hmm. 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 So y'all get down and y'all in the comment section. Tell me what y'all thought about it. If y'all didn't get a chance to see it. Hopefully somebody has taped it where you can see it for your own edification. But I tried to break down the majority of the parts as it was being shown to me. And uh, try to put my spin in and give y'all something of an entertaining type review, of course. But, uh, yeah, season uh, reunion two was good. Reunion one was just a recap of all the things that had transpired for that season in each episode. They were just doing like a recap like we do as content creators, give our opinion on it. But, of course, they had footage of everything that was transpiring throughout those episodes. But again, like, share, and comment in the section provided below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. You know I love it when y'all do that. And I love for you all to get in those comments and be respectful with one another. And put what y'all felt about what y'all saw and what y'all felt about the presentation uh, of the subject matter, of course. And if y'all did get a chance to see it, did my opinions differ from you all's? You know, was, was y'all seeing the same thing I was saying and getting the same perspective? Or was it something different? What did I miss? Uh, enlighten me, please. But other than that, y'all have a great afternoon. And I'll see y'all trying to put my Real Housewives of Atlanta um, review out. That was, um, that was kind of lackluster to me except for when Eva was calling herself backtracking I'm like somebody need to put a, a mic on her constantly <laughs> and just play it back for her for each scene so when she does come and has to do this follow up she'll know what's going on cause she know she's just acting stupid like she trying to act that dumb role like they say play that dumb role even though exactly what she doing amnesia that's what I'm starting calling her amnesia woman alright running around self-proclaimed i'm giving her that title but that's all i have for this particular video this recap on um season seven of merit and medicine part two reunion hopefully y'all enjoy it if y'all do share it share it share it okay so other people can know about me and my channel and they can come over and subscribe and i thank you for all of that but i will see y'all next video y'all be blessed bye